How'd you pay for that? It was free. Food's free in most universes, actually. It's weird, you guys have to pay for it. From toilet paper to coffee to chips, manufacturers are reducing packaging sizes without dropping prices. It's called shrinkflation, and it's happening everywhere. Today, we're going to uncover 10 sneaky shrinkflation items you will find at the grocery store. Doritos. Doritos! <laughs> Not now, later. There are a few places in the States where people aren't feeling the pinch. Inflation has reached a 40-year high. In certain circumstances, people are unknowingly paying for inflation's hidden costs. The price of Doritos hasn't actually increased, but shoppers may notice that each bag contains fewer chips than before. Frito-Lay acknowledged that they reduced their normal bag of Doritos from 9.75 ounces to 9.25 ounces. That means five fewer chips per bag. Just a little bit. I can't stress the littleness of it enough. The shift is a prime example of shrinkflation, which happens when food makers compensate for higher ingredient prices by selling fewer quantities for the same price. When it comes to their chips, this approach is extremely sneaky. To prevent chips from being smashed into fragments in transit, bags are partially filled with air to begin with. Food makers must show the net weight of their product on packaging under the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act of 1966, but Unless you've remembered the previous mass of a bag of Doritos, you'll probably never notice the difference. You might not even notice the change after breaking open the bag, save from a persistent sensation of disappointment. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups I want a Reese's, yo. Peanut butter cup? Most people have known for a long time that Reese's peanut butter cups have shrunk in size. It used to take three entire bites to munch down a cup when we were kids. One bite now feels all too normal, and most people have to make an effort to make the pleasure last and eat a Reese's cup in two bites. To be honest, everyone grew in size, which may explain why the chocolate seems to have shrunk. Still, most people have never been skeptical of other well-known chocolate brands. Snickers and Butterfinger still feel the same, we only have our doubts about Reese's. It's been a long-running suspicion. Every time a consumer finishes a package of peanut butter cups, this thought comes to mind. We always had the impression that there should be more in there. What is this? What the hell is this? The sneaky Hershey Foods Corporation, it turns out, has been deceiving customers for years. There's a three gram discrepancy between the net weight and the wrapper from a few years ago if you compare the two. There are fewer carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in the newer versions. There are also 20 less calories. So now you know how much smaller the peanut butter cups are. When we as Americans buy chocolate bars, we don't do so out of respect for our waistlines. We do so because we want to enjoy a sweet and unhealthy treat. When Reese's reduced their package weight, they also reduced our collective satisfaction. Pringles. We're on strike. Hunger strike. You're eating potato chips. It's a sad day when Pringles is a victim of shrinkflation. The iconic crisp business slashed the size of their chip-filled tubes by 17.5%. No! Just go home. No! Since January 2020, the regular Pringles can has decreased by 35 grams, weighing just 165 grams now. The weight of the normal tube of Pringles was changed owing to inflation. The newly shrunk Pringles can has a suggested retail price that is a wee bit lower than before. The 165 grams Pringle tube, however, is 10% more expensive per gram despite its smaller size and lower price. Many Pringles fans noticed the new, smaller 165 gram canisters on store shelves alongside the 200-gram tubes with the brand new design. Because the 200-gram tubes are taller, the difference is obvious. Customers have noticed that some retailers offer the 165-gram and 200-gram Pringles tubes for the same price, while others charge different prices. Pringles fans have resorted to internet forums to express their displeasure with the shrinkflation. Have we not sacrificed enough already? One cheeky forum post reads, it's hard to imagine how far some of these companies will go as prices and inflation continue to rise. Ice cream. Lick, lick, lick. It's an ice cream cone. <laughs> 
Your favorites are about to shrink in size, ostensibly to make us all healthier. At least that's the plan. A major ice cream brand has stated that the size of Magnums, Cornettos, and tubs of Ben & Jerry's ice cream would be reduced. It implies that none of them will exceed 250 calories, allowing customers to make better choices, according to the business. Experts believe that America's longtime beloved frozen desserts are continuously evolving in ways that customers may not be aware of. The company stated that they didn't want to do it at first, but waited until the day when they recognized a demand for smaller tubs. Some of the other major brands' ice cream novelty items, such as ice cream sandwiches, have been reduced in size as well. The number of Twin Pops has been decreased to just one. The proof may be found in the freezer area of any supermarket. All of Edie's flavors are now available in one and three quarter quart cartons. Breyer's exotic tastes have changed as well. The price for ingredients is expected to rise this year, according to all predictions, and cocoa is expected to rise as well. And although inflation is a major factor, ice cream companies claim their research reveals that some customers just prefer the smaller sizes. We're doing a diet together. It's a difficult situation, but they're hoping to sweet-talk their way out of it. Food analysts anticipate that smaller-sized boxes will be available next spring. Cereal. It's empty! It's just Cheerios and coloring books! You may have noticed your family gobbling up cereal at a faster rate, and it isn't because they're going through growth spurts. It all boils down to shrinkflation. From food and beverages to dry goods, you name it, shrinkflation is making holes in your wallet. No! Those two scoops of Raisin Bran sure look stingier nowadays. The phenomenon has caused famous cereal brands like Cheerios, Chex, and Lucky Charms to reduce somewhat in size, from 19 ounces to 18. What's the difference between this and price increases? According to consumer experts, there is none, and shrinkflation is nothing more than a backdoor price rise. Grocery producers are resorting to shrinkflation as a result of their inability to control costs, which they must pass on to their customers. Manufacturers state that when the cost of raw materials rise or the price of fuel increases, it makes shipping their goods to stores more expensive. They are under strain to either raise prices or reduce their item's weight. And they may do both at times. While shrinkflation may appear to be unavoidable, cunning buyers can still find methods to mitigate its effects. Supermarket customers will need to pay great attention to what they buy initially, recalling the size and weights of the goods, and then double-checking that amount when they go back grocery shopping. Shoppers may also wish to look up unit pricing for the things they want to buy so that they may compare prices. Unless you're buying a branded item for a specific purpose, you might want to try buying a store's private label instead, especially because they are often the last to change the amount of their goods. Candy bars. I also steal small items from 7-Eleven. Sweet tarts, Jolly Ranchers, and the like. It's time to update the candy bars you've enjoyed since you were a kid. A group of big-name candy businesses announced they'll be decreasing the size of their packages, reducing their total calorie count. The quantity of calories in the bar will also be listed on the front label. The reforms, which are expected to be completed by 2022, are all part of an effort to combat the country's high obesity rates. The statement was made lately by Mars Chocolate, Nestle, Ferrero, Wrigley, Giardelli, Ferrara Candy Company, Lint, and Russell Stover. While it may be a good idea to reduce the calorie count in some chocolate bars, one can't help but wonder if health reform is the true reason behind these companies' changes. That's interesting. That's very interesting. If they really want to make chocolate bars healthier, why not just reduce the amount of sugar in their recipes a little? Most savvy consumers have realized that these changes are coming from a place of greed rather than goodwill. Companies that have to deal with rising costs are making their products smaller and playing it off on the idea that they want to help prevent diabetes. Gatorade. Water sucks. Gatorade is better.
Gatorade drinkers have become accustomed to the rough lines of the sports drink's 32-ounce plastic container over the years. Now we're hearing that the beverage will be repackaged in a sleeker, easier-to-hold bottle that is also 12.5% smaller. Gatorade has already been selling 28-ounce versions of its protein-rich recovery formula, but a new promotional video shows they are redesigning their bottles entirely. Gatorade's adjustments indicate a shrinking trend customers should be aware of. Redesigned packaging can sometimes be used to hide other product modifications. The company claims to have shrunk the bottle to better serve their consumers. Gatorade stated it's more aerodynamic and easier to handle. Yeah, right. <laughs> the revamp has its cost, and the slimmer bottles are now heavier on your wallet somehow. Gatorade may be able to fool some people with this new design, but most people just see it for what it is, a way for the company to save money during these hard times. In reality, who actually cares if their sports drink is sleeker and more aerodynamic? Most consumers just want more of their favorite drink, not a uniquely designed bottle that's easier to grab. Walmart Great Value Paper Towel Rolls My towel! My towel. In the past few years, a string of quality paper towel brands have launched onto the market, some soft, some thick, and some heavy duty. But most of us still go back to our old favorites, Scott, Charmin, and Bounty. Those brands have been around for decades, and even though they've been overtaken by newer brands, they still have a loyal following. You can find paper towels at Walmart, but the store also sells their own premium brand of paper towels, Great Value. The paper towels, which are made by the German company GD have a different feel and are thicker than the paper towels you might find at other stores. The towels are also stronger than the paper towels you'll find at other big box stores. They're healthier for your skin since they're not bleached with chlorine, which can often cause rashes. Unfortunately, these paper towels aren't as great of a value as the name would imply anymore. Over the past few years, Walmart has reduced the sheets in each paper towel roll by 40. So now instead of getting 160 sheets in each each roll, you're getting only 120. They aren't the only major brand to have done this. It seems shrinkflation has hit all major retailers as they are desperately trying to recoup their profits. We need the money. Last year, Costco reduced their paper towels from 160 sheets per roll to 140 sheets per roll. The company states that the shift is only temporary, owing to increasing demand. Toilet paper. TP her house. TP or house? Toilet paper. Cover house in toilet paper. Do you notice that your toilet paper is getting smaller these days? You're not insane. It's true. 4.5 inch by 4.5 inch toilet paper squares used to be the gold standard. They're up to a half inch slimmer, shorter, or both nowadays. Apparently the change was significant enough to have been noticed by the naked eye, too. I see what you did there. Good one. Many people have complained to their local news outlets about a 26% drop in surface area. In addition, the width of the cardboard tubes is growing as the number of sheets per roll drops. However, the cost did not decrease. De-sheeting is the process of selling less paper for the same price. Because a regular roll is significantly smaller than it formerly was, they're now selling double rolls. So without trying to be scientific, some believe a double roll is roughly similar to a regular roll from a decade ago. Large businesses such as offices and restaurants are increasingly adopting technologies such as air dryers or, as the analyst says, regulating the number of napkins distributed to consumers to cut down on their own costs. Toothpaste. I have bigger problems. Can't afford toothpaste, so tonight my teeth will have... Film at 11. When a corporation tries to minimize costs without raising prices, the consumer loses out on product. Pepsodent is a cheap toothpaste that can be found at most supermarkets for $1. But recently, it was discovered that it was half an ounce less than the previous versions. As costs rise and corporate profits dwindle, they redesign products in a way to pass on this loss to their consumers. Smart, and smart. With a little less product, these companies are able to recoup millions of dollars a year that they would have lost to inflation. Pepsodent isn't the only major toothpaste brand that has been shrinking product size, too. Colgate, Crest, and other huge names in dental care have been sneaking around, reducing the sizes of their products over the years. It is what it is. 
Thanks for sticking around. We've got more videos just for you, so stay right here and check one out.